O oh, my Lord, Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to assist me as I meditate on the 24 hours of your most sorrowful passion. In your passion, you, your love drove you to suffer so much in your adorable body and in your most holy soul unto death on the cross. I implore your help, your grace, and your love to have profound compassion and offer a profound understanding of your sufferings as I meditate on this hour. I offer you my desire to meditate on all the hours, even on those I cannot observe. Please accept my desire to meditate on all the hours, even when I must sleep or tend to my other duties. O oh, merciful Lord, grant that my loving desire, united to you, may bring your holy blessings down upon us all. I give you thanks, O oh Jesus, for calling me into union with you by means of prayer. To glorify you, I unite myself with your thoughts, your tongue, and your heart, with which I intend to pray. I fuse myself in your will and in your love, and extending my arms to embrace you, I place my head upon your heart and begin. The 8 p.m. hour, the institution of the Most Blessed Sacrament. My sweet Jesus, love ever inexhaustible, I see that as you finish the legal supper with your dear disciples, you stand up and along with them raise a hymn of thanksgiving to the Father for having given you food. In this hymn, you offer reparation for souls who fail to give thanks to God for all the things he gives them and that sustain their health. O oh, Jesus, this is why in everything you do, touch or see, you always have on your lips the words, Thanks be to you, O oh Father. I too united with you, Jesus, take the words from your very lips, and always and in all things I say, thank you for myself and for all. In order to continue to offer reparation for souls who fail to give thanks to God. Oh my Jesus, it seems that your love has no respite. I see that you have your beloved disciples again sit down. You take a basin of water, wrap a white cloth around your waist, and prostrate yourselves at their feet. You do so with a gesture so humble that it draws the attention of all the heavenly inhabitants and enraptures them. The apostles themselves remain almost motionless in seeing you prostrate at their feet. But tell me, my love, what is it you desire? What do you intend to do through such a humble act, an act of humility never before seen and which will never be seen? Jesus replies, O oh, my child, I seek out all souls, and prostrate at their feet like a poor beggar, I am asking, persisting, and crying out to them as I devise loving stratagems to win them over. Prostrate at their feet with this basin of water mixed with my tears, I desire to wash them of all imperfection and prepare them to receive me in the most blessed sacrament. 
I so much cherish this act of them receiving me in the Eucharist that I do not want to entrust this office to the angels nor even to my dear mother, but I myself want to purify them in their innermost fibers and dispose them to receive the fruit of the sacrament. I intend through the apostles to prepare all souls. I intend to offer reparation for all holy works and for the administration of the sacraments, especially by priests that are carried out with a spirit of pride, without a divine disposition and with tepidness. Oh, how many good works reach me more to dishonor me than to honor me, more to embitter me than to please me, more to give me death than to give me life. These are the offenses which saddened me most. Ah, yes, my child, count off all the most intimate offenses they commit against me and offer me reparation with my own will. Console my embittered heart. Louisa. O oh, my afflicted Jesus, I make your life my own, and with you I intend to offer reparation for all of the offenses that you receive. I want to enter into the most intimate recesses of your divine heart and offer reparation with your own heart for the most intimate secret offenses you receive from your dearest ones. O oh my Jesus, I want to follow you in everything, and with you I want to go to all souls who are about to receive you in the Eucharist. And enter into their hearts to unite my hands with yours and purify them. I beseech you, O Jesus, with this water and these tears of yours with which you washed the feet of the apostles, let us wash souls who will receive you. Let us purify their hearts. Let us inflame them and shake off the dust with which they are sullied so that when they receive you, you may find in them your satisfaction rather than the bitterness you are forced to experience. But, my affectionate and good Jesus, while you are all intent on washing the feet of the apostles, I look at you and I see another sorrow that pierces your most sacred heart. These apostles represent all the future children of the Church, and each of them the series of each one of your sorrows. In some you discover weakness, in others deceit, hypocrisies, and excessive love for personal interests. In St. Peter you discover the lack of resolve and all the offenses of Church leaders. In St. John, the offenses of your most faithful ones. In Judas, all of the apostates with the whole gamut of the great evils they commit. Oh, your sorrow is so stifled by pain and love that unable to contain it, you pause at the feet of each apostle and burst into tears, praying and offering reparation for each of these offenses and imploring the appropriate remedy for all of them. Beloved Jesus, I to unite myself to you. I make your prayers, your reparations, and your appropriate remedies for each soul my own. I want to mix my tears with yours so that you may never be alone, but may always have me with you to share in your pains. But, sweet love of mine, as you continue to wash the feet of your apostles, I see that you are now at Judas's feet. I hear your labored breath. 
I see that you not only cry, but sob. And as you wash those feet, you kiss them and press them to your heart. Unable to speak because of your voice, which is stifled with sobs, you look at him with eyes welled up with tears and say to him from your heart, My child, oh please, I beg you with the voice of my tears, do not go to hell. Give me your soul, which I ask of you prostrate at your feet. Tell me, what is it you seek? What do you search for? I will grant you everything you seek, but do not allow yourself to be lost. Oh, please, spare me, your God, this sorrow. And again you press those feet to your heart, but in seeing the callousness of Judas, your heart is cornered. Your heartache stifles your voice and you were about to faint. My heart and my life allow me to sustain you in my arms. I understand that these are the loving devices you use for every obstinate sinner. Oh, please, love of my heart, I beg you to allow me to go around the earth with you as you partake in your passion and offer reparation for the offenses you receive from souls who are obstinate in not wanting to convert. Wherever there are obstinate sinners, let us give them your tears to soften them, and your kisses and loving embraces to bind them to you in such a way that they cannot escape. In this way, you will be consoled in your pain over the loss of Judas. Beloved Jesus, my joy and my delight, I see that your love runs and runs rapidly. You stand up, sorrowful as you are, and you almost run to the altar where there is bread and wine ready for the consecration. Love of my heart, I see you assume an appearance wholly new and never before seen. Your divine person acquires a tender, loving, and affectionate countenance. Your eyes blaze with light more than if they were suns. Your rosy face becomes radiant. Your lips smile and burn with love. Your creative hands assume the attitude of creating. I see you, my love, completely transformed. Your divinity seems to overflow from your humanity. Jesus, my heart and my life, your countenance never before seen draws the attention of all the apostles. They are caught by a sweet enchantment and dare not even breathe. Your sweet mother runs in the spirit to the foot of the altar to admire the portents of your love. The angels descend from heaven, asking themselves, What is this? What is this? These are true follies and true excesses of love. A God who creates not heaven and earth, but himself. And where? In the most humble of things, in some bread and wine. Oh, insatiable love, while they are all around you, I see that you take the bread into your hands. You offer it to the Father, and I hear your most sweet voice say, Holy Father, thanks be to you for always answering your Son. Holy Father, concur with me in this. One day, you sent me from heaven to earth to become incarnate in the womb of my mother and to save our children. Now, allow me to become incarnate in each host, to continue the work of the salvation of my children and become the life of each one of them. Do you see, O oh Father, there remain but a few hours of my life, and who would have the heart to leave one's children alone as orphans? Many are their enemies and passions, and great 
is the ignorance and weakness to which they are subject. Who will help them? Oh, please, I entreat you, let me remain in each host to become the life of each soul, to be their light, their strength, their aid in all things, and to put their enemies to flight. To whom shall they otherwise go? Who will help them? Our works are eternal and my love irresistible. I cannot, nor do I wish, to leave my children alone. The father is moved at the tender and affectionate voice of his son. He descends from heaven and is now upon the altar united with the Holy Spirit. And he concurs with the son. And Jesus, with a resounding and moving voice, pronounces the words of the consecration. And without leaving himself, he bilocates himself in the bread and wine. He then administers himself to his apostles. And I believe that our Heavenly Mother is not deprived of receiving him. O oh, Jesus, the heavens bow down and all send you an act of adoration in your new state of complete self-emptying. O oh, sweet Jesus, your love remains pleased and satisfied as you have nothing left to do. But I see on this altar, my love, hosts that will be consecrated until the end of time. I behold, lined up in each host, your entire sorrowful passion, as souls at the expense of the excess of your love prepare you for you, the excess of ingratitude and enormous crimes. And I, heart of my heart, want to be always with you in each tabernacle, in all the pixes and in each consecrated host that will exist until the end of the world to offer you my acts of reparation that correspond to the offenses you receive. O oh, Jesus, as I contemplate you in the most blessed sacrament, I kiss your majestic forehead. But in seeing and kissing you, I am pierced by your thorns. In the sacred host, how many souls force such thorns upon you? They come before you and instead of offering you the homage of their good thoughts, offer you their evil thoughts. You in turn lower your head as you do in your passion to receive and bear the thorns of these evil thoughts. O oh, my love, I draw close to you to share in your sorrows. I fuse all of my thoughts in your mind to remove these thorns that deeply sadden you. May each of my thoughts flow in each one of your thoughts to offer reparation for each evil thought and to alleviate your afflicted thoughts. Jesus, my love, I kiss your beautiful eyes. I see you lovingly gaze upon those who come into your presence, eager to receive an exchange of their gazes of love. But how many come before you who, instead of looking at you and searching for you, look at things to distract them? thereby depriving you of the pleasure you would have received from an exchange of loving gazes. You cry, and as I kiss you, I feel my lips wet with your tears. Beloved Jesus, do not cry. I fuse my eyes in yours to share in your sorrows and cry with you and to offer reparation for all distracted gazes, I offer you my gazes that are always fixed on you. Jesus, my love, I kiss your most sacred ears. I now see you eager to console souls, listening intentively, 
to what it is they ask of you. But they offer you your ears prayers that are poorly recited, without any trust and out of habit. In the sacred host, your hearing is offended more than in your very passion. O oh my Jesus, I take all the harmonies of heaven and fuse them in your ears to offer you reparation. I fuse my ears in yours, not only to share in your sorrows, but to offer you my continuous acts of reparation to console you. Jesus, my life, I kiss your most sacred face. I see it bleeding, bruised, and swollen. O oh, Jesus, souls come before you in the most blessed sacrament, and with their indecent postures and evil conversations, instead of giving you honor, offer you slaps and spittle. You receive them with complete peacefulness and patience, and you bear everything as you do in your passion. O oh, Jesus, I want to place my face close to yours, not only to kiss you and receive the insults your children thrust upon you, but to share in all your sorrows. With my hands I caress you, wipe off the spittle, and press you tightly to my heart. I also offer you the many tiny particles of my being by placing them before you like genuflected statues, and my movements as they that continuously prostrate themselves before you in reparation for the irreverence you receive from souls. Beloved Jesus, I kiss your most sacred lips. I see that in descending sacramentally into the hearts of your children, you are forced to rest on many sharp, impure, and evil tongues. Oh, how embittered you are. You feel as though poisoned by these tongues, and it is even worse when you descend into their hearts. Oh, Jesus, if it were possible... I would enter the mouths of each soul to turn into praises all of their offenses against you. My weary and good Jesus, I kiss your most ho sacred neck. I see it is tired, exhausted, and completely absorbed in your crafting of love. Tell me, what do you intend to do? And Jesus... My child, in this host, I work from morning till evening, forming chains of love. As souls approach me, I bind them to my heart. And do you know what they do to me? Many forcibly wrest themselves free and shatter my loving chains. And since these chains are linked to my heart, I feel tortured and become delirious. In breaking these my chains, such souls render my crafting of love useless, as they seek to be bound by the chains of creatures, and they do this in my very presence, using me in order to achieve their own ends. This grieves me so much that I undergo a violent fever and I grow faint and delirious. I unite myself completely to your passion, O Jesus. Your love is cornered. To console you for the offenses you receive from souls, I ask you to chain my heart with the very chains that were shattered by these souls. In this way, I can requite you with my love on their behalf. Beloved Jesus, my divine archer, I kiss your bosom. The fire you contain is so great that in order to gently vent your flames and seek the slightest respite from your labor, you begin to play, shooting loving arrows from your bosom at souls who approach you. 
Your game is to form loving arrows, darts, and javelins, and with these pierce their hearts, which causes you to rejoice. But many reject them, O Jesus, by sending you in return arrows of insipidness, darts of lukewarmness, javelins of ingratitude, thus leaving you so afflicted that you weep bitterly. O oh, Jesus, here is my bosom ready to receive not only your arrows destined for me, but those destined for but rejected by others, so that you will no longer lose at your game of love. I offer you reparation also for the insipidness, lukewarmness, and ingratitude of souls. O oh, Jesus, I kiss your left hand and I wish to make reparation for all the illicit or blameworthy touches in your presence. And I beg you to press me always tightly to your heart. O oh, Jesus, I kiss your right hand, and I intend to make reparation for all the sacrileges, especially for the masses poorly said. How many times, my love, are you compelled to descend from heaven into unworthy hands and hearts? Although you are nauseated in those hands, love forces you to stay. What is more, in some of your ministers you discover those who renew your passion. On account of their enormous crimes and sacrileges, they renew the deicide. Jesus, I am frightened at the thought of it. But alas, just as you were in the hands of the Jews during your passion, so you remain in these unworthy hands like a meek lamb, awaiting again your death. Oh, Jesus, how much you suffer. Your love for a loving hand to free you from these sacrilegious hands. O oh, Jesus, when you are in these hands, I bid you summon me to your side to offer reparation by covering you with the purity of angels and anointing you with your own virtues. By this means, the nausea you experience in those hands will be lessened. I offer you my heart as a shelter and refuge, and while you are in me, I pray for priests so that they may be your worthy ministers. O oh, Jesus, I kiss your left foot. I offer reparation for those who receive you out of habit and without the proper dispositions. O oh, Jesus, I kiss your right foot. I offer reparation for those who have been receiving you offend you. And when they dare to do this, so oh, I beg you to renew the miracle you performed with longiness, just as you healed and converted him at the touch of the blood which gushed forth from your heart, pierced by his lance, so at your sacramental touch convert your offenders into loving worshippers and their offenses into acts of love. O oh, Jesus, I kiss your heart, into which all offenses pour, and I offer reparation for them all, to requite you in love on behalf of all souls, and to share always in your sorrows. O oh, heavenly archer, if any offense escapes my acts of reparation, I entreat you to imprison me within your heart and within your will so that nothing escapes me. I implore my sweet mother to keep me always within her heart, so that I may offer reparation for all offenses on behalf of all souls. Together we shall kiss you, and keeping you sheltered, drive from you the waves of bitterness souls offer you. O oh, Jesus, please remember that I, too, am a poor prisoner. 
It is true that your imprisonment in the small circumference of a host is more arduous than mine. But I nevertheless bid you enclose me in your heart and with your chains of love to not just imprison me, but also bind one by one my thoughts, my affections, and my desires. Chain my hands and my feet to your heart, so that I may have no other hands and feet but yours. And so, my love, my prison will be your heart. My chains will be formed by your love. Your flames will be my food. Your breath will be my breath. And the bars preventing me from leaving will be your most holy will. In this way I will behold nothing but divine flames and experience nothing but the divine fire. While I experience life, I will also experience death, just like the death you experience in the sacred host. I will give you my life, and while I remain imprisoned in you, you will be set free in me. Was this not your intention when imprisoning yourself in the host? Did you not intend to be set free by those souls who would receive you and enable you to actualize your life in them? And as I cleave to you and embrace you, as a sign of your love, I ask for your blessing and a kiss. O oh, my sweet Jesus, I see that after you have instituted the most blessed sacrament and have seen the enormous ingratitude and offenses of souls at the expense of the excess of your love, though wounded and embittered, you do not draw back. Rather, you desire to immerse everything in the immensity of your love. O oh, Jesus, as you administer yourself to your apostles, I see that you tell them that they too must do what you have done, and you confer upon them the authority to consecrate. You therefore ordain them priests and institute the other sacraments. You tend to everything and offer reparation for everything. the sermons poorly preached, the sacraments administered and received without the proper dispositions and therefore without their intended effects, the mistaken vocation of priests on account of the ordin ordinand and of the bishops who ordain them, who do not use all the necessary means required to discern true vocations. Jesus, nothing escapes you, and I follow you and offer reparation for all these offenses. Then after you have fulfilled everything for the institution of the sacraments, you take your apostles with you and set out for the Garden of Gethsemane to begin your sorrowful passion. I will follow you in everything to keep you faithful company. <laughs> 